Greetings, Reformation. Before we begin service today, I'm going to bring a few announcements to your attention. November 22nd, we will be meeting in the front of the parking lot for the youth to do a meet and greet with me. So November 22nd at 2 p.m., there will also be an e-blast coming out with all of the details, but there'll be sidewalk chalk, a soccer ball, and fun. Social distance fun, that is. Also, thank you all for your generous hearts as I have just wheeled all of the food. It's only Wednesday and we've gotten so many donations for our emergency food collection for our open door food pantry. So thank you again all who are bringing food in and all who are keeping this ministry in your prayers. Now let us take a moment of silence before we begin. Daddy? Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved. Holy One, we confess that we are not awake for you. We are not faithful in using your gifts. We forget the least of our siblings. We do not see your beautiful image in one another, that we are infected by sin that divides your beloved community. Open our hearts to your coming. Open our eyes to see you and our neighbor. Open our hands to serve your creation. Amen. Beloved, we are God's children and Jesus, our beloved, opens the door to us. Through Jesus, you are forgiven. By Jesus, you are welcome. In Jesus, you are called to rejoice. Let us live in the promise prepared for us from the foundation of the world.
Righteous God, our merciful master, you own the earth and all its people, and you give us all that we have. Inspire us to serve you with justice and wisdom, and prepare us for the joy of the day of your coming. Through Jesus Christ, amen. The first lesson for today is from the first chapter of Zephaniah. Be silent before the Lord God, for the day of the Lord is at hand. The Lord has prepared a sacrifice. He has consecrated his guests. At that time I will search Jerusalem with lamps, and I will punish the people who rest complacently on their dregs, those who say in their hearts, The Lord will not do good, nor will he do harm. Their wealth shall be plundered, and their houses laid waste. Though they build houses, they shall not inhabit them. Though they plant vineyards, they shall not drink wine from them. The great day of the Lord is near, near and hastening fast. The sound of the day of the Lord is bitter. The warrior cries aloud there. That day will be a day of wrath, a day of distress and anguish, a day of ruin and devastation, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness, a day of trumpet blast and battle cry against the fortified cities and against the lofty battlements. I will bring such distress upon people that they shall walk like the blind. Because they have sinned against the Lord, their blood shall be poured out like dust, and their flesh like dung. Neither their silver nor their gold will be able to save them on the day of the Lord's wrath. In the fire of his passion the whole earth shall be consumed. For a full, a terrible end he will make of all the inhabitants of the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second lesson for today is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers and sisters, you do not need to have anything written to you. For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. When they say there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them, as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman, and there will be no escape. But you, beloved, are not in darkness, for that day to surprise you like a thief. For you are all children of light and children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness. So then let us not fall asleep as others do. Let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night. And those who get drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober and put on the breastplate of faith and love. And for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has destined us not for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build up each other, as indeed you are doing. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 25th chapter. Jesus said to the disciples, for it is as if a man going on a journey summoned his servants and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had the two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants came and settled accounts with them. The one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy servant. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with the two talents also came forward saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy servant. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward saying, Master, I knew you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. 
So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here, have what is yours. But his master replied, you wicked and lazy servant, you knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter? Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return I would have received what is my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with the ten talents. For to all those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless servant, throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Dear friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Creator and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. It won't be long now. The counting will soon begin. Children who can barely tell you how old they are will start counting backwards from 25, looking forward in time to shiny boxes and bags containing unknown treasures. Some of us never really get over this habit of counting days. Gary and his youngest brother would call each other just to share how many days were remaining until their birthday. Those calls were more frequent shortly before those high holy days, but they also kept track when the number was closer to 365. This counting of days is a fun tradition but it isn't quite what the psalmist had in mind when he wrote, teach us to count our days that we may gain a wise heart. Today we may say something like, make every day count to convey the same sentiment. Before I go any further, since the psalm wasn't read with the lessons today, let me read Psalm 90, the psalm assigned for this weekend. Lord, you have been our refuge from one generation to another. Before the mountains were brought forth, or the land or the earth were born, from age to age, you are God. You turn us back to the dust and say, turn back, O children of earth. For a thousand days in your sight are like yesterday when it is past, and a watch in the night. You sweep them away like a dream, they fade away suddenly like grass. In the morning it is green and flourishes. In the evening it is dried up and withered. For we are consumed by your anger. We are afraid because of your wrath. Our iniquities you have set before you and our secret sins in the light of your countenance. Who regards the power of your wrath? Who rightly fears your indignation? So teach us to count our days that we may gain a wise heart. Several years ago, my friend the rabbi taught me about the Jewish tradition of starting every day by naming 100 blessings. I love that tradition, but honestly, I am not disciplined enough to keep my attention through 100, and so I have made it a habit to name five blessings every morning. I probably should be naming 1,000 or even 10,000. But in order to consistently complete the task, I just named five. And I know that a number of you have taken to social media recently to name a blessing each day during the month of November. Both of these are great habits, habits that we should do all year long, habits that transform our perspective. I have a coffee mug on which is written a quotation from Eleanor Roosevelt. Do one thing every day that scares you. For me, the message is the same. Don't get too comfortable or complacent. Keep striving and growing. That message is part of today's gospel lesson as well. In the parable, when the master left his servants with talents, he expected them to do something with them, not just bury them in the ground. Now, our story does not include any specific instructions to the servants. The master didn't tell them to invest the money in the stock market, to spend it at the casino, to put it in the bank. It was assumed that they would use the talents, not just bury them. 
The story is told of an evangelist who stopped at a greasy spoon one night. He loved sugar in his coffee, so he took not one, not two, but three packets of sugar. As the waitress watched, the evangelist said, Ma'am, we're going to need more sugar at this table. The waitress looked at him and said, Listen, bud, before I give you more sugar, you got to stir what you got. As much of the world starts to count the days until Christmas, we tend to focus on what we don't have rather than stirring what we got. What do we need for Christmas when most of us don't need anything? The same is true with all types of money, all types of gifts actually, money, but also sewing and building and cooking and singing and teaching and repairing and praying. There is no one among us who possesses every gift, but all of us are gifted and all of us are called to use the gifts we have. Learning to focus on what we have rather than what we lack is part of counting our days. As we set up our angel tree of ornaments this weekend and prepared to receive food donations by drive up, I can't help but mention that we can use the gifts we have to help someone we don't know get something that they need. Our service board has been creative in coming up with safe alternatives during the pandemic so that we can all participate at our level of safety and comfort. As a pastor, I have a rare privilege of seeing families at times when days or even hours are numbered. They talk about many things at those times, but I've never heard them talk about the latest episode of a TV show or which celebrities are in trouble this week. At those times when a loved one's days or hours are numbered, people realize the incredible value of the gift of life and the huge hole in their lives when a life ends. Our psalm today describes a lifespan as 70 years or perhaps 80 if we are strong. Statistics in the United States tell us that the average lifespan for a female is now 81 years, and for a male it is 76 years. We have no guarantees that we will live for that amount of time, of course, but we do know that each day of life is a gift. A few years ago, I officiated the funeral of a man who lived a full life of 101 years, served his country in the U.S. Navy, celebrated his 66th wedding anniversary before his beloved wife died, enjoyed his grandchildren and his great-grandchildren. And the next week, I officiated a funeral service for a boy who lived only 12 minutes. Each life was a gift. Each death is met with sadness. Even for people of faith who cling to Jesus and his gift of salvation, death is not easy. Even when there is pain and suffering, we can acknowledge that death is a relief, but that doesn't make grief any less significant to those who remain. Being people of faith doesn't take away our pain, but it helps us considerably because we know what is ahead that hope we read of in Romans 5. Hope does not disappoint us because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. Let us pray. Oh God, teach us to count our days that we may gain a wise heart. Teach us to use the gifts and talents that you have given us. Help us to make a difference in this broken world. And thank you for the hope we have through Jesus Christ.
our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Longing for Christ's reign to come among us, let us pray to see God's power in the church and in the world responding to each petition with the words, hear our prayer. We pray, O oh God, for the church in our community and throughout the world. Raise up and sustain believers who will use their talents and gifts to assist with worship and to lead congregational ministries in this difficult time. Grant an extra measure of the Spirit to our pastor, deacons, and all religious leaders, near and far. Protect your people with the armor of your world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O oh God, you are the temple of your people. For the earth we pray. During this autumn season, give to plants and wild animals a time of rest. Keep the coronavirus and other pathogens away from the animals that we form and the plants we use to sustain us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O oh God, you are the maker of the heavens and the earth. For all the nations we pray, bring an end to war and terrorism. Cultivate a worldwide spirit of cooperation that will seek just internal agreements and shared human rights. Rescue humankind from the worship of wealth and give a homeland to immigrants. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O oh God, you are the heaven we seek. For the United States, we pray. Quell attempts at violence and restore national goodwill and prejudice, prejudice of all kinds and lead us into a unity that embraces diversity and excludes racism. Comfort those who live in fear of the future. Bless all the newly elected officials, especially President-elect Biden, with a passion for justice and a commitment to honesty. Cover all who will lead, rather it's regional, national, or global. Lord, in your mercy. O oh God, you are our mighty fortress. We pray for all who are in need. Visit with health and good medical care all the sick, especially the thousands who each day are contracting the COVID virus. Prepare a vaccine to save our world from COVID-19. Give food, employment, internet, and housing to the, to the countless people who are struggling to live and do school. We pray especially for our community and members who need strength and healing, especially Cheryl, Eric, Jean, and Peg, the family of Lutz and the family of Sparks, Ruth, Peggy, and Skylar's father. Hold them, Lord, in your mercy. Oh God, you are our physician, our nurse. For many of us, what the ancient prophet said is now true. These are days of distress and anguish. We beg you to listen to the prayers of our hearts, especially all that is said and unsaid. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Oh God, you are father, mother, lover, master, friend. We remember before you all the saints who have lived and died in the faith, especially the ones that we have lost this past year and those we name here silently or aloud. At the end of time, bring us all into your peace. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O oh God, you are the light perpetual. 
Receive these prayers and in your gracious mercy, grant your strength to our neediness. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. And the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. There is a place for you at this banquet. Come and feast at Jesus' table. All are welcome. Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Now let us pray. Lord Jesus, in this simple meal you have set a banquet. Sustain us on the journey. Strengthen us to care for the least of your beloved children and give us glad and generous hearts as we meet you on the way. Amen. Now the blessing from the book of Romans. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, the Creator, Jesus the Christ and the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen.